Now the argument was that 18G per se creates an occupied field. If your lordship now sees my written submission 1O, very interesting. Of all the sections, every section except one section, every section says central government by notified order, by order, by instruction, by notification in official gazette, by rules. Section 20 is the only section which says that on management and control, state law will not operate. Section 20 is the only which your lordship mentioned last time. One section 20 says that management and control is by IDR Act. All state laws get repugnant. But every other provision, your lordship just see my written submissions, 18G. Now, may I request your lordship to see 18G for a minute? 18G for lordship, you can see the bare act. We all have read 18G1, nobody has read 18G2. Lordship is what 18G1. 18G1. Lord Chief has seen number one number of times, I won't read it again, by notified order. Please see 18G2. Without prejudice to the generality of the powers conferred by subsection 1, a notified order may thereunder may provide for A to H. Now, my humble submission is, today there is no notified order at all. So, our submission is the whole field is open to states. Tomorrow, my Lord, Hypothetically, the notified order may cover only A, D, F. Right. My submission then is, whatever is not covered will be open to the state legislature. Because the notified order has got a scope of covering a territory of A to H. If parliament chooses to cover only A, B, C and doesn't touch the others, <laughs> technically nothing wrong. Except that 18.1 yes. expressly confers the power on the central government. Exactly. Exactly. Now, where do the states get their power? No, if the central government doesn't con uh, confer it, because entry 18 gs I have a little, that's no, no. a little far no, I tell you why. I tell see, the Lord central Lord. government, before it decides whether to exercise or not exercise the power, yes. has to be satisfied about the conditions precedent which are spelled out in subsection 1. If the central government comes to the conclusion that the conditions preceding are not satisfied and therefore does not exercise the power, the state can't say that, well, I'm taking a different view of the conditions preceding and I'm exercising the power no, I, I don't because the central government no, has no, not exercised. Your worship is right. I will not make such an argument. What I wanted to see, what Tikaramji said. That's right. Only to the no. says that the states can exercise power only under NT33 of List 3. Exactly. Because in respect of a controlled industry. Exactly. Except for the fact that to the extent to which the field under NT33 is covered by the IDRA, yes. because now one we are, we are very clear that 18G is an exercise of the legislative domain under NT33. Same language. Right? Yes. Therefore, once 18G has occupied the field, then the states cannot say that I will bring about other legislation or exercise power under 18G because the central no, government has not exercised. No, 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 I don't say that. It is a central act. There is no question of exercising powers in the state. So, state, you are saying that the state can then enact a law? No, I am saying that entry 33 is concurrent list. Right. So, trade, commerce, production, supply, distribution is both parliament and state. Right. Entry G, 18G, the power to prescribe except production, they don't touch production. All other things, the state can make a notified order. The argument of the union is once 18G is there, that is enough. According to me, because Lordship will kindly see, when Parliament makes a law, it can either make a law fully, which is fully operational per se, like the Income Tax Act or Central Act, GST, it is fully operational, nothing is required. It can make a law which has to be implemented through a notification, through a notified order, subject to rules. So in that case, the law is still not there. The law, only the power is there, but it's not exercised. I am putting for the... But except for the fact, conceptually... Yes. A failure, or Lord, let me not use the word failure, uh, the absence of a notified order by the central government huh. may be an indicator that the central government as a delegate of parliament does not consider it expedient to regulate that particular yes. aspect. Yes. In fact, I was going to tell you about this stage. Yeah. No, in fact, Lord Shibu, can In which say? case, can the state say that, well, because this falls in a concurrent list subject, hmm. Though Parliament's delegate has come to the conclusion that it is not expedient to regulate for a variety of reasons, the state will still regulate. That may be a little far-fetched. No, I, what I am submitting is, entry 33 must be ready to entry 26 and 27. Supply distribution is open to the state legislature, subject to entry 33. What happens is, once a notified order comes, it becomes an occupied field in entry 33. 
and it's a no no go zone for the but states you, until the stage of a notified order there is no occupied field. there is no occupied field but the doctrine of occupied field is not dependent on the administrative exercise of power no i'm only submitting it is postulated on the ex existence of a legislative instrument i i'm submitting but the doctrine of occupied field should not be mixed up with the doctrine of occupiable field occupied field means parliament has occupied that field it has occupied the field by legislating no. Not Sorry. by by providing for an administrative order under the under no. The I I am just leaving a lot of interpretation. Right. Conceptually, it makes no, very no, difficult. No, 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 no. Please see conceptually. Please see conceptually. Entry section twenty, the clear bar of the states. Now there are many cases, management takeover, etc. Is there many things of regulation, other provisions are there. We are only concerned with eighteen G. Yes. Only eighteen G. I am submitting. The entry thirty three. Will prevail over the state's power under entry twenty-five or twenty-six of list two. Lord, she will just take entry twenty-five or twix two, list two, which is subject to entry thirty-three. Six. Entry six. Entry six. Yeah, twenty-six, twenty-seven. Yeah, twenty-six, twenty-seven. So trade commerce within the state, production supply within of 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 course within the state, will be subject to entry thirty-three. So I am only submitting that if entry thirty-three. Has not been exercised by Parliament by issuing a notified order under 18G. My powers under in entry 26 and 27 are there. So long as a notified order is not issued. Not there because what I'm submitting is in a law made by Parliament must necessarily mean a law made by. How does a Parliament make a law? It may make a law per se, or it may make a law which is implemented through a notification. If the notification is not there, no. In taxing law, we say a lot. If the computation provision is not there, there is no charging provision. So if there is no prescribed rate, there is no duty. So I am only submitting a lordship entry 18G. That's why Tikaram Ji, I use the word occupiable field. So, Mr. Data, is it your contention that today, because there is no notification, uh -huh. state can legislate on subjects touching 18G? Can there be state legislation dealing with the aspects covered by 18G today? Yes, my submission is take for example milk products. Take entry twenty seven. There could be a state legislation touching the aspects covered by eighteen G. Yes, schedule industry it can be. So please, please take the schedule industry, my lord. So what you are effectively arguing is this: that if there is no notification under section eighteen G, hmm. the subject falls under twenty six and twenty seven of the. I am not saying I, no, no. We have that's a, that will be a wrong argument. I am not making that argument. See, Lord Chief, will kindly see the Industry Development Regulation Act covers thirty nine industries under the. Schedule industry. The schedule covers thirty-nine types of industries. Now, the centre can occupy that field by issuing a notified order under eighteen G. It can control supply, distribution, trade, commerce. No problem on that. Today, centre has not done it at all. But your argument postulates that the occupation of the field ensures, hmm. ensures only when the centre has issued a notified order. Yes. The answer to that is that the occupation of the field. Operates at the stage anterior when Parliament has legislated. No, my, my, that's the point I'm making. I'm saying it's an Parliament can occupy the field. It's an occupiable field. Please see the schedule, Mr. Please. It's see an occupied field. field. No, my, my, my humble the submission implementation is implementation. <laughs> cannot <laughs> be diff, cannot be equated with the. No, I, I, Lord Chief, just kindly see if my. We will consider it. But that's a no, Lord Chief, just one it. last point on what the solicitor was uh, saying, and then we can ask the others to argue. On uh, at what point is that does a jurisdiction kick in? Yes. No. Just see the schedule for okay. for a moment. Yes. Now let's take for example, take entry twenty seven. The last part may not be a very correct. Now, Lord Chief, can you see entry twenty seven? For example, food processing industries, canned fruits, milk foods, malted foods, flour, flour, etc. Now, two points I'm going to make here. I am saying that suppose there is no notified order with regard to milk foods or canned products, why can't the Tamil Nadu government or let's say Maharashtra government make a law regarding distribution of mango, say for example, regulated within that state? There is no notified order. But tomorrow Parliament says that with respect to canned mango slices, this is the law. Maharashtra's power is gone. That's why I use the word occupiable field and occupied field because there must be. That's why Tikaram says there must be a repugnancy in fact, not a de jure. It should be in fact. Otherwise, what will happen? Not the danger is Parliament will make a law under Entry Three and never implement it. It will paralyze the state legislatures. And if your Lordship kindly sees 
there are 46 items in, in list 3 technically parliament can make a law with respect to any of these lists and not bring it into force no but food industry it is a declared industry exactly food safety act FSSA, no, it's no, a declared I, I, industry. No, I, I'm on a different point. 352, it is a declared industry. Understood. No, nobody no disputes that. I'm answering my Lord, this, uh, Lord of Chief Justice's question. That is it your case that a state can make any laws with regard to these scheduled industries? My answer is yes. Say, for example, can. Take, for example, glass, ceramics, timber, plywood. The state can regulate timber, but if there's a notified order, quit timber, then I have no power. But if there is no notified order, why can't me within Tamil Nadu or Maharashtra make laws regarding movement of timber products? And you know, the whole irony is the uh, surprising thing has now become a center state issue. This act from 1979, there is no rule. We are arguing on a law which is not being implemented at all. The strangest irony is that after 1979, Lord Shri will see at the end of the footnote, there is no rule made under this act after 1979. In the 2019 lot of only four items are now regulated. For licensing. For licensing. This is only licensing. So what is legislatively progressing, they want to bring it back judicially in the reverse gear. With great respect, we should not do that. If parliament has chosen, it has made the law. It has chosen not to occupy the field. It is saying the states, you please do whatever you want. We respect your autonomy. But if there is some emergency, I will step in and regulate food, soaps, timber, etc. No problem. But I am saying today that if there is no 18G Even order. Those industries which have been exempted today, they can always bring back the, bring back. the exemption can be withdrawn. No, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. Not. Suppose there is some serious deforestation. Yes, yes. yes. We, who thought of COVID? Yes. So the final point I am making. The state will be acting under entry uh, 33 list 3. No, no, no. The, so the state will be acting under entry 26 or 27. What I am submitting is when the state is regulated, let us say for example Maharashtra, mangoes. Suppose the state is regulating the canned fruits, fruit products or milk products in Bombay. It will be acting under entry 26, show that, 26 Seven. or 27. Trade, commerce within the state, production, supply, distribution of goods. Lordship said goods includes raw materials. 